Welcome to episode 220 of Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers. I'm your host, Angela Watson, and I'm here to speak life, encouragement, and truth into the minds and hearts of educators and get you energized for the week ahead. Today, I'm talking with Monica Brady Meyerov from ListenWise about powerful ways to use podcasts and other audio content with your students. Visit truthforteachers.com to get the transcript or find our Truth For Teachers podcast community on Facebook. So this is a very special and unique episode of Truth For Teachers. We do not have any sponsor messages to share at the beginning because our sponsor is our guest expert on podcasting in the classroom. I'm talking with Monica Brady Meyerov. She's the founder and CEO of ListenWise, which is an award-winning listening skills platform. Monica's also the author of a new book coming out in April 2021, published by Jossie Bass. It's called Listen Wise, Teach Students to Be Better Listeners. It's about how K-12 teachers can help their students build powerful listening skills. Monica is a delightful and fascinating guest, as you will hear in just a moment. Before starting ListenWise, she was an award-winning public radio reporter for nearly 25 years. She covered news in Kenya, Brazil, Washington, D.C., and Boston for NPR and other audio news outlets. Now, sometimes when I interview a guest, what they say is super affirming of what I already know and believe. And sometimes what they say is clarifying. They build on something I already know something about, but they help me connect more dots and have a deeper understanding. I love both of those kinds of conversations. But there's also a third kind, which is when things take a very different turn than what I expected. And my mind is open to brand new possibilities, and I learn a ton of new information. And that's what happened when I talked with Monica. I thought this episode was going to be about using audio to help kids learn content. What I didn't realize was the tremendous value of using audio to teach listening skills. We also delve a little bit into some of the brain research that tells us how we process audio information and the benefits of it. Monica shares how audio is a powerful tool for equity and differentiation because most kids have a much higher listening comprehension level than they do reading comprehension level. You can bring authentic stories and primary sources to your students via audio, helping to build empathy and personalize information that might be difficult for kids to connect with through just words on a page. Not only are podcasts a great way to build students' content area knowledge, but as you'll hear, audio instruction also helps strengthen their listening comprehension skills. By the end of the conversation, my mind was racing with possibilities and ideas of how the things Monica taught me could be used with students. And I hope you'll feel the same. Let's get started. This is going to be a great conversation because I don't think you have to sell anyone who's listening to this on the value of podcasts. Uh, We are already a huge fan of the medium, but I think a lot of listeners have never used podcasts with their students or else they've only tried it out once or twice because the preparation can be really time consuming if you don't have access to good resources. So can you tell us what's the value of podcasts in the classroom? What are some of the benefits of using them and other audio content with students? There are so many benefits. And the, the bottom line is that they can help with students learning overall. Um, but it starts really with reading and the connection between listening comprehension and reading comprehension and how there are many studies that show they are correlated so that a student's listening comprehension far outpaces their reading comprehension until at least the eighth grade. So there is so much opportunity in the lower grades to help students learn to become more proficient readers, um, improve their comprehension, hear words spoken, uh, look at the vocabulary and meaning and spelling of words if you're reading and listening at the same time. So there, um, for the earlier grades and really all through K-12, because as we know, so many students struggle with reading well beyond fourth grade and well beyond eighth grade as the name mm-hmm. schools show. So this is something, uh, adding listening to your curriculum is something you should be thinking about doing K-12, to be honest. Um, and as I said, it's going to help with reading. It's going to help with reading comprehension. It's going to help with engagement because as your listeners know, podcasts can be really engaging. So getting a story about a content that your piece of content that you've got to teach, let's say World War One, kind of dry. How do you introduce it? How do you engage them? Well, Listen Wise has a collection of stories that are chosen for the classroom. They're all three to five minutes in length and they are 
the one selected to be the most engaging on the topic. So if you're trying to start a unit on World War I, it'd be really cool to start with a podcast that takes a modern day visit to the street corner in Sarajevo where Archduke Franz Ferdinand was shot and the start of World War I happened. That's what audio can do. Um, mm-hmm. So there's other things too with um, your special populations, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But I just think overall, like the benefits of using audio are, there's so many. Um, and I know we have some time today to talk about all of them, but I, I'm really excited about the connection between listening and reading, engaging in content, and then, um, and also for English language learners and how it can be key to helping language learners um, learn authentically spoken English and academic language. Yeah, let's definitely do a deeper dive into that. I- I'm curious how this can benefit neurodivergent students, uh, ELLs, um, and other students who may benefit from more diff- differentiated instruction. What kinds of things have teachers done to differentiate using audio content and podcasts? Well, the way I look at it, Angela, is that listening is an equalizer. And that's what we all want for our students, to have an equal education. And when we're all listening to the same thing, we're all getting that equal opportunity to get the uh, the meaning of the content, the language, the spelling, everything that comes with that. So when you're thinking about students who need extra support, what ListenWise does is provide that scaffolding so that everyone can hear the same story, but those students who need extra support because they're struggling readers or they're English language learners, you can add things such as the interactive transcript. So this transcript is goes along. It's like a read-along transcript for the audio. And each word lights up in blue as you hear it authentically spoken. That's an amazing support for struggling readers and English learners. Mm-hmm. In addition, you can slow down the audio by 20% and the transcript stays synchronized with the audio. Um, so those are just a couple supports that really help you meet the needs of all students. And what's neat about the ListenWise platform is that when you make an assignment for your individual students and you're making this differentiation, um, it goes directly to the student, not any, not other students know who's getting what kinds of supports. So, um, but, but what everybody knows is they're all hearing the same audio. So, uh, unlike, In text differentiation, when the words are actually changing and you're changing the sentence structure, you're changing the vocabulary. In um, ListenWise platform, when you're adding these scaffolds, you're not changing that core piece of audio. You're providing the right supports for the students so that they can access it. And for English learners, what's amazing is that obviously you can't learn to speak another language without listening. It's the first thing you do when you're learning a new language. And it, in um, to, to be able to hear words authentically spoken, to see how they're spelled, to hear people of different accents and locations, you know, um, speaking the, these, these words has been so important for our English language learners, especially in remote learning, because we know many of our ELs are he- hearing less English during remote and hybrid learning. So giving them an opportunity to uh, really just listen to a real world public radio or podcast story is important. Yeah, I should say that too, because all of our collection is is authentic. You know, these aren't stories created for the classroom. These are podcasts created for you and I. Either maybe you've heard the story on NPR or you listen to the podcast with your kids at home. These are stories that um, we do a curation of them so that you can easily find them on our website. And we Uh, select the stories that are related to the curriculum you're teaching, the standards you're covering, and then we add all this differentiation and supports so that you can easily assign it and use it, um, assign it online and use it with your class. That's one of the things that I really like a lot um, about ListenWise is that, as you're saying, these are authentic stories. A lot of them, you know, you're bringing in the primary sources so students can hear like the actual audio of, of different things that have happened. And I, that is so powerful when we think about helping kids develop critical thinking skills and understanding current events. Absolutely. And and it's something I value highly because as a reporter for 20 years, I just love telling stories and hearing someone's voice helps to build connections with them. There are studies that show that listening builds empathy too. You're hearing mm. another human, you're connecting with them. And, and that's a very powerful um, thing you want to build in your classroom. And then using these authentic stories builds an understanding of world events. 
So all the stories on ListenWise are nonfiction, factual reports from credible news sources. So kids are hearing about the, the world firsthand from those involved. And as I said, we we curate for them. So we're always looking for great stories about teens, how teens are affected, like things that they'll also feel uh, more of a connection with to build their interest. Um, And and as you note, that podcasts can really help build your critical thinking skills because you'll be listening to reports about um, events, either historic or scientific discovery, the latest rocks from Mars or, um, you know, the, the history of impeachment, let's say, because that's been in the news. And, and being able to critically think about these um, stories is something that ListenWise sets up really well. Because a- after this class listens to the three to five minute story, we provide a list of listening discussion questions and uh, listening comprehension questions. And we build them on Bloom's taxonomy so we can help students Uh, really touch all the important points of learning from just detail recall to um, inferencing and and being able to critically think about what they've just heard in the reports. Another way we do that that I think is really fun and one of the most popular features is uh, on Fridays, we have a debate story. So every day we have current events in on the platform that we're adding new um, every single school day. And on Fridays, we focus on a story that allows uh, for a good conversation or a written, mostly we, we promote conversational debate after listening to one of these stories. And that's a great way to, sh- to hone your students' critical thinking skills. Wow, so much good stuff. I mean, I, I love what you said about how this um, builds empathy and it makes a, a bigger connection to the text. Like, I hadn't really thought about that, but that's one of the things that I really love about podcasts is I feel like it just makes things so much more personal than just reading words on the page and how powerful that must be for students, um, you know, especially students who struggle to read, um, you know, to be able to access that level of connection. And that, I mean, that's a word that particularly spoke to me given, you know, all of the challenges that we're going through right now and how disconnected and, you know, lonely and isolated so many of our students are feeling um, just due to the pandemic. Like what a powerful way to, to, connect them with humans in the curriculum rather than just like reading the words on a page. Absolutely. The human voice is so powerful and to hear it is completely different than reading it. And, and even though there are um, other audio sources like the audio books or other tools have audio of the print, it's different, right? Mm -hmm. It's different when somebody is reading a text that was written for reading, mm-hmm. or is a computer voice for sure reading from the page to say, oh, well, you have audio in this program because you can click this button and a computer will read it to you. It's completely different than what we bring to the table, which is that authenticity, that connection, and being able to hear somebody in a story with the emotion of their voice and the, the way they say it and the, the pace at which they say it is so much more engaging and brings that human connection. So we, we think that that's, that's really powerful, and especially at a time when kids are feeling so disconnected. Can you tell us about some examples about how teachers have used ListenWise podcasts with their students or ListenWise audio? I'm wanting to hear more about what this actually looks like in practice. So how and when are kids learning with podcasts? How much time does it take? And so on. Yeah, absolutely. I'll give you two examples, one from a general education classroom and one from a teacher focused on helping English learners. So let's say you're a seventh grade teacher uh, teaching ELA and you're about to assign the book The Giver. And you're thinking, well, you know, we need to have more than, you know, 70% of our content needs to be nonfiction. This is a fiction. How can I bring in some nonfiction? And then you see on Listen Wise, you search The Giver and you find, wow, we've got a really cool interview with Lois Lowry. So that would be a great way to start off this unit to um, help my students understand why she wrote The Giver and what she hoped to accomplish with it and some of the interesting thoughts that went into it before that you even start to read it. So um, you might assign that as a homework assignment online entirely to listen to the four-minute story and answer the listening discussion questions online before coming into class and getting ready to discuss um, what you learned about the author and then maybe even have a, uh, some thinking about what that means you think the giver will be about. What will the book be like? What are, your, what are you um, thinking might, what the book might be about? That's so cool. I love that. 
It's really wonderful to hear it too. And um, it gets kids excited about it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a lot of books in our ELA collection and a lot of authors talking about their motivation for writing. And you don't hear that that often, right? Often Mm -hmm. you just get to sign the book, read the book. We're going to talk about the book. And then the kids are thinking the book doesn't relate to my life. Why does this matter? But in reality, you hear Lois Lowry talk about her father having dementia. And you realize, whoa, like this came from her real experiences. And, and maybe those students have some experiences that are similar to that with their grandparents. So that's one example of a gen ed classroom. Now, um, for English learners, I, the, one of our teachers out in Tahoe, Truckee, California, told me just a great story of a scaffolded retail she does. So listen wise, in our current events, we have something called weird news. And these have become like the most popular segments. They're only 30 seconds. They're always about something strange, like, um, you know, an alligator ended up in somebody's pool in Florida, or a local coyote was stealing shoes. It's kind of stories, (laughs) I sort of think of them as social media stories. But what's great about them on our platform is that they are filled with really high level academic vocabulary, but they're highly engaging so that you can um, hear a story about a panda escape and hear the word culprit which is a very high level word, but you'll be able to teach it in context. So what this EL teacher does is plays the story once just for the gist and has students just sort of say, did you understand what that story was about? Did you, um, you know, tell me the main points of the story? And then they listen again. And this time they're taking detailed notes because the third time they are going to retell the story. And it's such a great way to do it. I think she gives them another option to just listen again, third time on their own. The story is only 30 seconds. It's fun. It's interesting. They don't mind listening three times. And then the students get to actually speak and in their own words, tell what happened in the story. So that's a really great focused um, language approach to using ListenWise to not only hone your listening skills, but to work on your conversation and speaking skills. Yeah, that's a really great tie-in. And I love the idea of a 30-second podcast. Like, talk about bite-size, perfect for a short short um, child attention span. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, you know, I, I know that, that ListenWise is designed to have that, that transcript where each word lights up as it's being read and, um, you know, students can follow along and that can help keep them focused when they're listening to audio. But um, I actually want to talk a little bit about... Um, the way that our brains process audio and how that's different from the way that we process written text. Because one thing that I hear a lot from teachers is like, they they like, I like to listen to audio books, or I like to listen to podcasts, or, um, you know, I have courses that, that have an audio component to it. And teachers like, I like it, but I find that my mind wanders and I feel like I'm I'm missing things. And for me, I feel like when my mind wanders, when I listen to audio, I feel like that's a feature and not a bug. I feel like it, it, <laughs> audio opens my brain up to think about things in new ways. And so I'll often be listening and I'll just, you know, I'll realize that my mind is drifting and I'll just pause and finish up that whole line of creative thought, wherever it was that my brain went, maybe rewind a little bit, go back. And I love to listen to podcasts when I'm walking or moving. Like I feel like I process the information so much better. Have you noticed any of that in in your work with um, students in, in audio content? Absolutely. You've had on hit on some really great points. You know, first is what's going on in your brain when you're when you're listening. And I've recently done a a new review of all the research because I wrote a book called Listen Wise, Listen Space Wise, Teach Students to Be Better Listeners. It's being published in April by Wiley. And there's a whole chapter on the neuroscience of listening. How cool. (laughs) I'm excited about that. I just love it. There's so many ways to you know, dive deep into listening. And the book is meant for K-12 teachers to really help you teach your students be better listeners. And in this chapter on the neuroscience of it, it goes into the fact that your brain is creating a movie in your mind as you listen. If you are hearing a story about a chef cooking up a delicious meal and they chop the garlic and they throw it in the hot oil and it's popping and sizzling, your olfactory parts of your brain are turning on. Mm. They want to taste it. Like they've shown, uh, fMRI imaging shows that. Also, if you're um, hearing a story about uh, somebody throwing a ball, like a pitcher is throwing a ball to the batter, and you're the catcher, and you're being put in those shoes, you are also 
sending signals to your your hands to catch the ball. Like you are having a real full body experience. So um, listening is akin in some way to actually being in the scene. And I think that's why you say, oh, my mind is wandering because you're in the scene. You're wandering with it. You're being a part of it. Mm -hmm. And that is so powerful when it comes to teaching and learning, because there's nothing we want more than to have your students feel a part of what they're learning, draw on their own background knowledge to understand it. And that helps with comprehension and retention. Because if I tell you, oh, an, a researcher and a, uh, went into the forest and it was green and dark and thick and hot and this, and I'm reading that, like it's different than if you hear it and you're, you're hearing the crunch of the underbrush and the buzz of the mosquitoes, then I'm making a picture in my mind of the forest and you're making a picture in your mind, drawing on your background knowledge. And we've created our own different but similar movies with the same sound. And that's very powerful for um, engagement and comprehension. So I, I think that, that that's something that, um, you know, a lot of teachers might overlook in terms of how audio and especially highly produced good quality audio, like on ListenWise, can help engage their students into a scene. The other thing I'll say is like one of my one of, I have many favorite stories on Listen Wise, but one of them is about what it's like to be a refugee. And the reporter takes you through a simulation of a refugee having to leave home quickly and grab five items. And then they're told, put back two. And the people in the story are experiencing it, which means we're experiencing it. Mm. And kids who listen to that just come away feeling very uncomfortable and like they're feeling the same emotions as the people in the story because of this whole... Um, neuroscience that goes on when you're listening. In, in terms of like keeping on track, you know, as you say, yeah, your mind can wander. I know kids, the students, their minds wander. That's okay. ListenWise has a solution for that too. We do have graphic organizers where you can track the phrases as you hear them. We have T charts you can print out or do online. There are a lot of metacognitive strategies that can be employed to keep students focused as they're listening. So there's, it's okay to have that movie going in your mind and to wander a little bit, but it's also good to have these structured um, graphic organizers to make sure you're brought back and on task. Yeah, that makes total sense. And I can see for some assignments, students need to be sitting and focused and, you know, the graphic organizer would be helpful. And then other times it would be really useful, like the, the refugee example you gave, to really just sort of get lost in that experience for a few minutes. Exactly. What would you say about the movement piece? Do you notice, do you feel like a lot of people like to walk or move when they're listening to audio content? Well, I know as adults, we do. And that that helps us um, just, well, what's cool about audio is that you can be doing something else. How many other things can right. you be doing um, while doing something else? So audio is very freeing in that, in that way, unlike any other medium. So you're allowing, um, so that's an important part of it. I don't think that I actually, I do know there are some like gym teachers who are using us and some teachers who, uh, they don't let their students move around, but they turn off the lights and they say, mm. you know, close your eyes, just listen, like explore in your mind. Um, the movement piece is something I think that's important in terms of like you, you, being allowing kids to get away from their computers, especially right now, mm -hmm. to think that listening is something that you don't have to do while looking at the screen that you could put on your put on your earbuds and go home with because we are on we can be accessed on any cell phone, any laptop. So I do know teachers assign it as homework, and some kids are listening to it on the way home from school. Are they doing something else while they're listening? That's great. That is it's it it's a really um, you know, less stressful on your eyes and your, your typing and your computer time to be able to listen to something. Yes. I really like that idea, too, of having of turning off the lights in the classroom when you're doing face-to-face -face instruction and, and letting kids just feel and experience and immerse themselves in it. That's such a nice break from, as you're saying, staring at screens, looking at a piece of paper, you know, it just... It is, it's taxing to be t um, constantly, you know, tracking the speaker and, and staying focused and making eye contact. So I really like that. And I've also heard of some teachers who, um, if their students, if they have enough devices for this, for students to listen to audio, um, to go for walks, to do like laps around the outside of the school or the track or the playground or something while they're listening to some audio content, 
and then um, discussing it with a partner. So you're walking side by side with a partner. This is obviously a pre-COVID example. You'd have to think about how to make that work now um, and keep it safe for kids. But I love the idea of, of kids pairing up, listening to the same audio. As you said, like that's the great thing here is that regardless of kids' abil- reading ability levels, they can access the same story walk around, get that movement, get that fresh air, let the mind breathe a little bit, have that space. And then you spend the second half of that walk or the second lap around discussing it with your partner. I thought that was so cool. I would have loved that as a student. Oh, I would have too. That would be awesome. And I have heard of teachers even in um, online learning now doing similar, like listening together online and then pairing off in a break room to discuss what they just heard. Um, that isn't moving around as much. And I get what you mean. I, I love the fact that audio is the only thing you can do while doing something else. And we listen more than we do anything. We listen more than we read. We listen more than we write. But I think people just um, take it for granted that, well, of course, we're just we're listening. You know, we don't we don't need to focus on our listening skills or we don't need to listen for a purpose. And, and certainly in, in K-12 classrooms, it's a really undertaught skill. I think teachers assume that a student comes to class and they know how to listen, but they need to learn how to do math and, and read. And, and yet, and then the skill of listening, which can be taught and can be improved and to, to great outcome because better listeners are better learners, better listeners are better readers. Um, they're missing a big opportunity uh, with their students to engage them and using this, this overlooked skill. Yes. Okay, so I am I'm so excited right now about using audio <laughs> content with students, and I have a feeling everybody listening to this is really excited too. So I want to circle back to something that I brought up at the beginning that I feel like is a big barrier, and that is all of the the prep work for teachers that goes into, first of all, you need to pre-listen to the podcast. You need to, depending on the source, maybe you don't if you trust the source, but you probably need to vet it for appropriateness and that sort of thing. You need to develop a lesson plan. You've got to figure out how are you going to Um, assess students learning, all that kind of stuff. And that's really time consuming, especially if it's not something that a lot of your colleagues are doing, you don't have a lot of resources and support for it. So can you tell us about some of the features that ListenWise has that saves teachers time and helps create this more meaningful experience that you've been talking about when kids are listening to audio content? Angela, you touched on all the reasons why I started (laughs) ListenWise, because as I said, I used to be a public radio reporter. And when my daughter was in third grade, she was a struggling reader. And I was going into her classroom frequently to help figure out, like she was getting assistance from a reading specialist. And I talked to her teacher. But the one thing I noticed was that everything she heard on NPR, she could understand at a very high level. Mm -hmm. Yet I knew if I gave her the transcript, she wouldn't be able to read it. So I went to her teacher and said, why aren't you using public radio more in the classroom? These podcasts and stories are what you're teaching. Can I bring a few in and see how they, how your students respond to them? But her answer to me was exactly what you just laid out. It takes so long to find the right story. You have to screen it. Then you need to write all the questions around it. How are you going to assess whether the students understood it? There's so much more that goes into just finding that right story and using it in the classroom. And I know thousands of teachers, and I'm sure many of you listening, have heard that story on NPR and like written it down and brought it into your classroom, and you've done it. And I want you to keep doing it. That's fantastic. But the reality is, it's so time consuming. And the moment is fleeting when you hear that perfect story on your drive home from work to then getting it into your classroom. So ListenWise does all that work for you. So some of the features that save teachers time, in addition just to the curation, is that we create this bank of questions for listening comprehension and reading discussion questions based on Bloom's. Um, We create a quiz, an online multiple choice auto-scored quiz. This is our favorite feature. As you can imagine, it's so easy with one click to assign the quiz. And that can, that what that does is it assesses students on four key listening skills. Uh, Did they understand the main point? Can they get a a literal meaning, a detail recall, inferencing, um, and a vocabulary word in context? So that was actually five. (laughs) So (laughs) we do actually assess eight, but in most of our stories, we keep it focused on four or five key listening skills. And they may sound familiar to you because it's very similar to reading. Mm -hmm. But 
assessing your reading and assessing your listening are super different. And what we've done is I started, we started partnering with Metametrics, the makers of the Lexile level a couple of years ago to build the first um, attempt at really truly assessing listening. Mm. Because honestly, I was surprised that there was no way to assess a person's listening skills, nor was there a way to say, this story is harder to listen to than that story, right? And teachers were asking us that. They were like, well, we need lower level listening for our early elementary or for our English learners. And we would say, well, you know, there's not a measure for that. Well, we're so thrilled that uh, last year we introduced, well, we were the first to use with the Lexile audio um, measure, which is Metametrics new measure of audio. So they're applying a scientific measure to each audio story on our platform, and it gives you a number. It says this story is this Lexile audio measure, just as you would see a written text and could apply a Lexile text measure. So we're finally getting more of the science that's been missing into the listening so that we can understand what makes a story more difficult to listen to than another. And not surprisingly, there's similar features to those in a print story. It's grammar, it's syntax. But it's also the rate of speech, the amount of pausing, things like that. So it's really fascinating. So all of our audio, every single piece of audio has a Lexile audio measure on it now. And you can look at that and and see in the grade range, what are the measures, what are the numbers that are good for your student's grade range? The next step in this process that we're uh, starting to gather data on and think deeply about is the student measure. So now how, where are my students on this scale? And Lexile has created, um, has put these audio measures on the same scale as the text scale so that when we do create this measure of a student's listening abilities, we'll be able to start comparing them to their reading abilities. And then getting back to that research I shared at the beginning of our talk about how listening comprehension and reading comprehension are tied and tied together and that up until the eighth grade, listening outpaces reading, you're going to be able to see with your students, if you're using ListenWise and these Lexile measures, where your students' strengths lie and how you can help them improve uh, reading, let's say, by giving them this level of listening. So I, that was a little divergent on all the features we have, but I just wanted to get into that because it's so key to all the ways we make it easier, I guess, to have a teacher use ListenWise. They can go on, they can um, look at our chart and say, well, I'm teaching fourth graders and this is the Lexile level range. And I'm going to put into our advanced search bar the word adaptation because I need to teach this scientific concept. And I'm going to get a bank of stories ready to go. And and in those stories, I'm able to assign a listening, a comprehension quiz that'll be automatically scored. I can make a written assignment that helps apply those listening comprehension questions online and uh, be sent back to me. There's also graphic organizers. And we also have a tab that gives very specific instructions about what a teacher should do before, during, and after the listening. And then another thing we added was paired text, right? Because like listening and reading, they're so tied. And teachers kept saying, well, it'd be great if we also had a text to read about the same subject. And then students can be asked to to take information from both and synthesize it or compare viewpoints. So we've added those as well. Oh, that's cool. Well, every <laughs> every time you share a feature, I'm like, that's cool. Oh, wait, no, that's even better. Like, <laughs> you have really thought of everything. I hadn't even thought about es- essentially Lexile levels for audio content and all the different factors that go into that. That is so interesting. Yeah, we're thrilled to have worked with uh, Metametrics to put this together because since we started ListenWise, everyone's asked, well, how, how hard is the story? What's the, you know, is this hard to listen to or easy to listen to? Right. And it was surprising to hear that it didn't exist. That's really, really cool. Um, talk to us about the difference between the free and the paid versions of ListenWise. I'm assuming that most teachers want to check this out before they try to get funding for it. So can you talk about what's possible with the free version? And then how do you recommend teachers get started with ListenWise? Yeah, so there is... Um, any teacher can sign up or any parent can sign up for free for ListenWise, and you'll always have a free account to ListenWise, and that will give you access to all of our current event stories, and we have 
more than a thousand current events and we're adding them every single day. Wow. So with those stories, you'll also get the bank of listening comprehension questions and discussion questions. And you'll even get a, a uh, link so you could easily share it with a classroom. So we really want to enable teachers who may not have the funding to buy the full platform, but they can still use audio because for me and for ListenWise, it's a passion about audio and getting students listening, improving their listening comprehension skills, and getting this great content in the classroom. So free can help you do a lot of that. The premium version of ListenWise is a paid subscription for schools or districts, and it allows for the whole platform that's required to really truly implement ListenWise in your classroom. You roster students in your class. You can create these differentiated assignments. You assign the listening comprehension quizzes. It also gives you a lot of the different the uh, support features, the scaffolding features, such as the um, interactive transcript, the Lexile audio measures. These are all things that we've added that are part of the premium subscription. So if you think about it from, you know, if you're if you're in a well, every single state, I must say, has a speaking and listening standard. So I know every state has a standard about it. Um, and you if you you know, you're trying to meet the standards. You can do that um, using ListenWise Premium. And then if you're in one of the 22 states that tests listening, because it's uh, 22 states have it as part of their high stakes ELA exam, there are there is a listening passage and there are questions on it. The premium really helps your students prepare for that. It gives them the opportunity to see and, and practice this quizzing similar to what they'd see on the SBAC. So um, if you're if you're in a state that tests listening, you definitely want to look closely at premium and even just general practice, though, you can still do a lot on free with all of the current events and exciting stories we're adding every day. And premium can be purchased for just one teacher or in one classroom, right? Yes, you can as well. There's an easy way to do that online. OK, where should teachers go if they want to check this out and, and set up an account? Yeah, listenwise.com and you would sign up for free and in the process it'll ask if you'd like a 30-day trial so we would love you to sign up for that and just it's it's uh opens the door for you to explore everything with your classes and get your students on it right away and you could be assigning quizzes that afternoon Uh, we also have a brand new feature that allows you to invite other teachers in your school and then create a school trial So by inviting a few other teachers, you can unlock a longer trial than the 30 days and you can get a cohort going so that several of you are trying it out. And when you love it, you can all go to the principal and say, hey, we need to have this. We need to find a way to bring premium to our schools. Um, So, yeah, it all starts at listenwise.com. I'm so impressed by how well you know teachers and schools and and what's needed, because that's exactly (laughs) that makes total sense. It's going to be so much more persuasive to go to an admin and with a group of teachers and say, hey, we've been using this now. You know, we've had this free trial that go- actually goes on for longer than 30 days because it's a group of us who signed up for it together. We've been using it with our students. Here's the here's our students' um, assessment scores. Here's the increases in their listening skills that we've noticed. Here's the engagement we've noticed. We really, really want to have funding for this. I think that would be so powerful. That's what we hope. We want to enable teachers to make a good case for ListenWise. And and we think that after they've used ListenWise for 30 days or longer in a school trial, they're convinced they, they, they know the value of it. They can see it with their students. They get we get great reactions about from teachers about how much their students love it, how how they look forward to it and talk about it and remember what they heard. And they're just so energized by it. That's so cool. I'm so glad you shared all of this with us, Monica. And I, I want to think about something that's really important for teachers to remember in the week ahead, because you've shared a lot of really important information about ways that we can use audio with kids and how it really benefits their listening skills. What is something that you wish every teacher understood about using podcasts and audio content with students? For me, it comes down to better listeners are better learners. This is a skill every student can use for life. And it's in your power as their teacher to help them become better listeners. 